Hello everyone. Humankind is more than two and a half million years old. Many things have happened during this time, and every one of them keeps raising questions. What will happen if you freeze a person for a century? What do you feel when you return to Earth from outer space? Why do people in old photographs look ill? Well, today we will lift the veil of secrecy and, well, and tell you a lot of interesting things. Are you ready? Then let's get it on. What happens if you freeze a person for a hundred years? Fry, the most famous pizza delivery guy in the universe, slept in a cryo camera for a thousand years. What the? <laughs> Woke up in a new world, experienced a bunch of adventures, and even became a meme. Fry, of course, can be envied, but we're not talking fantasy today. The idea of freezing people for their subsequent revival appeared in the 18th century, and many scientists since have actively supported it. In 1967, a person was placed in a cryo camera for the first time, and since then, the number of volunteers keeps growing. Well, why not? It does look pretty tempting. You lie in a special refrigerator for a few years, get enough sleep, and wake up in the future, where there are flying Teslas, peace around the world, and Half-Life 3 is out. But here's the thing. Scientists can easily freeze a person, but they do have some problems with defrosting them. That is, you can put a person in a cryo camera for 100 years, but there's no guarantee that when the alarm goes off and the deadline comes, the frozen person will be able to get up and come to their senses. Our blood is the main problem, because like any liquid, it turns into a pile of small crystals at a very low temperature. If the body gets a little warm, these icicles will cause internal bleeding and the person will die. So even taking into account today's technology achievements, this procedure isn't safe. On the other hand, only 50 years have passed since the first person on Earth was frozen, so we don't know for sure. Maybe in 2067, scientists will find a way to defrost us, and future cryo camera users will have a more pleasant time. Buttons on shirts Here's a funny fact. Buttons on men's clothing are fastened to the right side, and on the female clothing to the left. We know, we know, you can't wait to check if this is true, right? Okay, we'll do it quickly, we'll wait for you. You see? So, you're probably wondering why this is so. It can't just be in order to distinguish men and women's clothes. Besides, there are a lot of things for this purpose. Skirts, for example. We thoroughly studied this question and found several reasons for this button conspiracy. Some researchers believe that it's because of the maids who help the rich ladies to dress. These hard-working girls are mostly right-handed, which means that the buttons on the left made the process of fastening clothes on the lady easier and faster. And men, even very rich, most often dress without help, so they button their buttons to the right using the right hand. What do astronauts feel when they come home? Since people haven't yet figured out how to build a Millennium Falcon, flights into space are still a rare, dangerous, and rather risky business, from the moment the rocket is launched to the return to Earth. It's not surprising that some astronauts call the moment of landing on their native planet a second birth. And it's not because of the incredible g-force, but because of the consequences of spaceflight. After landing, astronauts always take time to get used to walking on a hard surface and recover physically. Almost all people who've been in space experience heaviness in the whole body, which can last for days. They feel dizzy when making a sharp turn and some begin to feel sick. The reason is the gravity of Earth. Their bodies get used to living without gravity pretty quickly on the ISS, and they undergo several changes. Due to the fact that calcium comes out of the bones in space, they become terribly fragile. There was a case when an astronaut broke his finger by just slightly touching a table. And don't forget about habits that work only on Earth. Don't ask a person who's just arrived from outer space to give you something because he's likely just to throw this thing at you, or at least be ready to dodge. Do fish talk? Most of our viewers will say that fish can't talk. After all, everyone knows that fish are dumb, and underwater there's complete silence, because there's too little air to talk. Yes, we agree, there really is not enough air, at least for humans to talk. But who said that underwater inhabitants couldn't come up with their own way? Hello. After all, sound travels five times faster in water, and it would be strange not to use this to their advantage. However, the range of sounds available to fish isn't very wide. Nature hasn't endowed them with voice resonators. Therefore, underwater inhabitants make noises with anything they can. Some use their swim bladder, others their scales. Some use fins, others their gills. Carp makes a cracking sound with its teeth located in its deep throat. 
Experienced divers say that sometimes you can hear grunting deep underwater. No, don't worry, it's not some unfortunate little pig that an evil kraken has dragged to the bottom of the sea. Actually, several kinds of fish can grunt. For example, the rusty blenny and the angelfish. Don't think these sounds appear just because they have nothing to do. Every sound depends on the situation. For example, the mackerel, after meeting a fish of the opposite sex, starts to quiver happily. And plectognathus fishes usually make sounds because of fear. These fish inflate their body, producing a loud croaking. We're not kidding, friends. Some fish do use sounds to drive away or attract other inhabitants of the ocean. Because yes, they can hear. What's next? An opera singer fish? An octopus playing the clarinet? A sponge selling hamburg- Oh, wait, yeah, oh, that does sound familiar. Why is... Ugh, ugh. Why is yawning contagious? Ah, oh, you all probably want to know how yawning works. Well, if someone in the room yawns, everyone else starts yawning as if by command. But what is the reason for this strange effect? After all, if one person needs a little more oxygen, it doesn't mean that everyone needs it. Let's be honest, scientists haven't yet found an adequate answer to this question and are constantly suggesting new theories. The coolest of them is that yawning is a manifestation of empathy. We have mirror neuron reactions in our head. So when we see manifestations of something in another person, we imitate the other person's movements. Therefore, the better we know the yawning person, the more we sympathize with him or her, and the more chances we yawn in response. By the way, dogs often yawn if the owner does it. Feel the connection? However, this doesn't apply to groups of people with increased drowsiness. For example, in the morning in a subway or at the first class at school. There are no secrets. All yawning people just really, really want to go back to a warm bed and keep dreaming, and not go anywhere. <sighs> Give us a like if you just yawned. Why women started shaving their legs Adam. Fashion is a very changeable thing. To understand this, you just have to look at some old pictures. Nowadays, even a sweatshirt from last year's collection can be considered hopelessly outdated. But there are things in the world that have a much longer life. For example, the makeup used in ancient Egypt. You must remember these beautiful winged eyeliners on Pharaoh's faces. And what about cosmetic procedures? It seems that girls have been shaving their legs, plucking their eyebrows, and doing other strange and sometimes rather painful procedures for thousands of years. And historical films seem to prove it, showing us well-groomed, beautiful actresses, even in in the midst of some jungle or the gloomy Middle Ages. However, in fact, the tradition of shaving legs appeared only during the Second World War, and not because women suddenly decided that they needed to be different from hairy men. The reason is the shortage of stockings in the US, and the fact that it was considered indecent to go out with bare legs. With the beginning of the war, almost all nylon and silk was used in the production of parachutes, and so the crafty women found a brilliant way out. They began to draw stockings right onto their skin. A tonal cream was applied to the legs, which gave them a peculiar glint of nylon, and for greater resemblance, they drew a seam on the back of their legs. Of course, for all these procedures, the skin needed to be shaved, and it wasn't some kind of life hack from a single resourceful woman. Beauty and hairdressing salons started offering applying liquid stockings. At the request of the customer, they could draw not only a seam, but even holes and stitches. Maximum realism. With the end of the Second World War, stockings began to gradually return to the shelves, but the fashion for shaved legs has survived until now. Why people in old photos have their hands on other people's shoulders? If you check some old photographs, you'll probably notice that the poses in them look a bit strange. People used to put their hands on other people's shoulders or hold on to certain objects, and sometimes they just shake hands with each other as if their strict parents force them to reconcile. You can build different theories on this. For example, that the hand on the shoulder is a sign of great trust or a rule of etiquette, but in reality, everything was a bit different. The fact is that the process of photography used to last much longer than today, and photographers of the past didn't even dream about taking pictures in just a split second. Back then, they had to deal with complex devices a few minutes to an hour before the photo was made, and now imagine how difficult it is to remain absolutely immobile in such a situation. 
and even try to smile. Even now that the click takes just a sec, some impatient models still manage to jerk, and as a result, blurred spots appear, and then mysticism lovers start looking for ghosts. But if today a blurry photo can be easily repeated, then a hundred years ago it was necessary to start the entire long process over again. That's why back then, photo studios had a lot of different devices for single photos, bookshelves, stands, and even sculptures that could be leaned on. In addition, don't forget that this was the beginning of the photography era, and many people were distrustful of the camera. They felt shy and didn't know where to put their hands. So, the solution was to put your hands on the shoulder of the other model or to give him a handshake, and it was a way to rest. So what other questions have been puzzling you guys? Tell us in the comments and don't forget to give us a like. Amazing gadgets, upcoming technologies, incredible inventions, and other cool stuff related to high tech on Tech Zone. Subscribe, you won't regret it. The link is on the screen and in the description. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks, and we'll be right back to you as fast as we can.